have you come across clients even in your own past experience that they just are not listening to the to the consultants their advisory board whatever the case may be i guess the key thing here is like everything in life depends mm. and i would have said it's it's all about communication um and it's not about our clients listening or the consultants asking the right questions or mm. or not listening themselves mm. i think the key thing that i found is consultants should get the best understanding they can from their clients mm. of what the client is looking for mm. as opposed to just providing the service that mm. that they've rolled off the shelf they know yeah. probably worked elsewhere yeah. but just because it worked elsewhere mm. may not work for that client mm. They're the ones who are now paying you the money. Yeah. And the advice that I have from the years I've been working as a client is, mm. I was happy to pay people to advise me. Yeah. And I was. Mm. But I was looking for them to advise me in a particular way right. and in a reporting format structure that enabled my business right. to not duplicate that information. So is your advice then in, in that initial stage, the reason clients aren't listening is maybe they're not getting the right advice? Is there a workshop requirement, a team building aspect needed? Again, this is project, depending on the size of the project and project specific, of course, small projects, you struggle to have the available capital to have team workshops, team building events, that type of thing. But how do you get to know your client then as a consultant? Well, anybody who's going to pay you money, surely they want to advise you on what type of information they're looking for. Most clients are focused on their business. They'll know their business better than you will. Like if, if you think you know their business, then you should be working in their in their firm. Um, but from my experience, they're more focused on their internal deliverables, their internal metrics. And really what you have to do is you have to go and meet them. You have to have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, sit with them, understand what, they, what's, what are their business looking for. Because um, if you do that, you'll become much closer to them. The, 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 the advice you're going to be giving them isn't going to be just reporting. It'll be advice because at that point, they'll pull you into their business because they realize they're not duplicating. They don't have to pay somebody else to reprocess your information. What a waste of money that would be. But that is constantly happening. I mean, it happened a lot. Um, so for me, that, that initial have a cup of tea with them, go and meet them. And, and now the way tech is, you can go and we can sit in front of our clients way better than we did before. Like 20, the accessibility. 20, like. Absolutely. It's, it's an, uh, to suit your client's needs. So at any time you can sit in front of them and see from their reaction, is it working? Is it not? How can we improve it? They're simple questions. I wouldn't have got asked that two or three times over a decade. So then, you, so in relation to clients not listening, it, it feels like perhaps consultants aren't really asking the right questions, are not directing the client in, in the right way. Maybe, they, as you mentioned, they don't understand the client because they haven't really spent the time. So then the consultants, and we're consultants today, right? So we have to take this, our own advice as well, I, um, I'm assuming here. But then we sh it's not a one brush kind of paints all, not at one shoe fits all situation as a consultant. You really need to understand your client. So a lot of the advice today given by consultants perhaps doesn't really fit the client's needs, the business, as you mentioned. So, um, as I said earlier, like everything depends in life. And I'm not saying all consultants, some consultants I work with, some consultants Again, that work general, for me you know. are fantastic at doing it. It's just when anybody spends money, I always look at money, you have to look at it as you're spending your own. Yeah. When anyone spends that money, you should go and see them to make sure that that's what they were looking for. Do you know, th that's pretty fundamental. Yeah. But often, like my past experience, both on the contractor side, the consultant side, client side, often the advice consultants are given actually doesn't really fit the project, the client's business structure. And sometimes they're not interested and perhaps not capable of actually advising on that particular topic, if you like? Again, it comes down to experience mm -hmm. for me, for um, the experience of the consultancy I was getting in, in place uh, and the people. So there's a difference between reporting and, and advising. Yeah. You have to have some war wounds. You have to be in the trenches to be given, to give, to give advice. Yeah. You know, if you just have somebody who's reporting, as a client, if you were sitting there and someone's just reporting to you, I would look long and hard at why you're paying that money. Because you don't want someone who's sleeping, walking in the trench with you. That's a bad place. You need somebody who's actively, who is actively engaging, who's going to be coming to you, bearing in mind you, you're the client. They should be coming to you, asking you how your day is, and then going, how can I help? 
you're looking for added value. You are, the day of manually trenching through bills of quantities, yes, that still has a place, but through the use of BIM and data, we are, we're advancing that to a point where that's, that'll become automated. It's become, and it's becoming less and less really of that delivery, if you like, in terms of manpower. I always looked at who's bringing intelligence. And that's the key. And, and it's the same for what we're now doing for our clients. It's about intelligence. It's about understanding the supply chain, understanding who the suppliers are, who, um, what products are out there, what tech is out there, and really what are the pitfalls for our particular clients, i.e., is the product fit for purpose after they're using it? And what about, uh, what about giving advice that the client doesn't want to hear? How do you... How do you how do you approach that? If you again, no, your experience, like you know, yeah. So um, again, it needs to come from somebody who's had some battle scars. So somebody who might be sitting there who's just kind of reporting to me, not really giving me the information, and then saying, "Well, that's you need to stop." Yeah. That wouldn't go down. That wouldn't be what I'd look be looking for. They need to have the relevant experience. Doesn't matter age, but the experience to give that. But I definitely would always want somebody who challenges the logic of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And there's a fundamental here. Someone who has the courage and the strength and the knowledge to say hold or stop is more valuable to you than someone who's just saying yes. Because there's been times where in my career which we probably should have said hold or I should have taken the task off of somebody much earlier because the risk did happen. They just didn't inform me early enough because it would have reduced the pain or the stress I would have gone through. And likewise, there's times... Big calls sometimes require people to say, stop the project and re- reset it. And that's an interesting one then. So as a consultant, you're advising your client in a certain direction. That direction really is a difficult decision to take. Often we see our clients not taking the decision because of the personal impact that that decision might have from them within their environment. Not about the project. I'm talking about you know, their career, how they speak to the board, the, the, the powers that be that sit above. And often we see is people sit back, not, not taking a decision. At that moment in time, there's probably three, four, five directions that the project could go, four or five decisions a client could take. Each week and day that goes by, one of those possibilities falls away because it's now the time is gone, you've gone too far, and eventually you're left with no choice one choice or no choice. And a lot of people seem to do that. You're left with spending a lot of money. Ultimately, the procrastination in making that decision will lead you to a place where ultimately the client will have to foot the bill. Well, that's the inevitability of anything anyway on, on projects. All risks is with the client regardless of whether you transfer it or not, I would argue. I, I, I'd argue slightly, sli- slightly different to that because at a, at a very outset, if the client knew they'd have to spend 10, 15 maybe 15% more, that may cause a situation where the site doesn't fit, the project doesn't work. And the best thing for the business, for that business, is to step away and save that money and reinvest it elsewhere. Uh, I've, you know, that's, that's the right decision for that business. We are being brought in to provide that advice, and we've got a professional code of conduct to stand by, and people who are paid should have the courage to step up and say that. That's what we're there for. We're not there to just take the coin and go, this will be fine. It, it, in my experience, it hasn't been. Yeah, it's good consultancy, I would say, like uh, to really step up and, and, and be brave, as you say, have the courage to actually advise your, your clients in that direction. 